Welcome to this tutorial brought to you by River City Graphics. Today I'm going to be showing you how you can use displacement maps to warp textures around your objects in Photoshop. So to get started we're going to open up Photoshop and the first thing we're going to do is just create an object to warp our texture around. So I'm just going to grab my ellipse tool, hold shift and drag out a circle. And so then we're just going to kind of make this into a ball shape by going down to our FX at the bottom of the layers panel. It's going to be off screen but I'm going to gradient overlay. We're going, to, we're going to select under style, uh, radial, click reverse next to the gradient, click on the gradient color, and we're just going to double click on the black and put this down so it's a little bit softer. Click OK, OK again, OK again. And so basically the first step um, in doing this is that we're going to actually need to select a channel. But before we do that I'm just going to show you exactly kind of what we're trying to get at. So I have this layer called streaks and I've already created this so that you guys don't have to watch me create it on video. Um, basically I took and just grabbed my rectangle tool and made one and then I just duplicated it a bunch of times until I kind of had a bunch of lines. So basically you can see if we took and overlaid this on the ball um, it wouldn't look very realistic so we're, we're kind of going to try and get these to curve a little bit on the ball so it looks like they're um, more integrated into the design. So the way that we're going to do this is by we're first going to go to our channel so I'm just going to turn this off click back onto our original shape go to the channels palette so it's right next to the layers for me but if you can't find it go to window then down to channels so basically what we're trying to do here is uh, find the channel that has the highest contrast. Now for most of your images, you'll probably have an image with color. So because mine's black and white, you're not going to see any difference between these. But the minute you go off of the RGB and onto one of these specific ones, it's going to put your image into black and white and you're looking for the one that has the highest difference between black and white. So I'm just going to select blue. So once you've found that layer um, or that channel that has the highest contrast, right click on it, go to duplicate channel, and then basically this box will come up and what we're going to be doing is we're going to set the document destination to new and then we're just going to click OK. So basically we're making a new channel in a new document. So we have it right here. We're going to go up and do file, save as. We can just call this displacement map. I already have one made so I'm just going to click on that and save over it. So now you can see we have two documents, our original one and our displacement map one. So we're going to go back into our original one, turn back on all of our channels by just clicking on the RGB, flip back over to our layers. Now we can actually start using that displacement map to kind of warp our streaks. So I'm just going to turn this layer on, then go up to filter, down to distort and displace. Now within here, um, these settings are going to change depending on the size of your image. Um, you will have to tweak these a little bit. Um, I'm just going to keep them set at 40. It'll probably give us a fairly good effect um, depending on the size of this ball that I made. And then for displacement map, I always keep it on stretch to fit and repeat edge pixels. So I'm just going to click OK. And now basically what's going to happen is it's going to want us to look for that displacement map. So I'm just going to click uh, or just type a D, click on displacement map and click OK. So now for whatever reason it kind of pushed it over to the side but basically you can just kind of push it back on there. I'm not sure exactly why it did that but you can kind of adjust it how you want. So I'm just going to scale it up a little bit so that we can kind of get the streaks to look better. And so basically now you can just kind of position them on the ball how you want click the check mark and then you can, I don't know, make a mask or something around the ball. So I'm just going to grab my marquee tool, hold shift and while I'm drawing it, hold space bar. That way you can kind of move it around. It looks pretty good. And then just click on the layer mask and it'll automatically crop it. So we can take and turn this down a little bit um, so it's not as obnoxious. Well, we want to turn down the layer, not the mask. So now you can see our streaking effect is is fairly good. You can see that they're actually kind of following the contour um, of that ball. Now a little bit on the edges they kind of look a little bit straighter than they should be but again this is basically to give you a starting point like most things in Photoshop. Um, you will have to tweak them with other tools. Um, a lot of times you won't need to do something like this. You'll just need kind of a subtle um, change in direction in order to sell the texture that you're applying. Um, so I would definitely recommend trying this out um, and getting familiar with it because it can be great in just giving you that extra element of detail um, that will actually sell the texture on your objects. Um, one thing I wanted to mention was it's helpful if you have your texture with um, a transparent background. So like I had my stripes had transparency between them. Um, if you can't, it can also work, um, but I just wanted to note that 
if you have that transparency, it's probably of a benefit to you. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Don't forget to subscribe, rate, and comment, and I'll see you next week with a new video tutorial. Thanks for watching.